Maniacs, welcome to the newest episode of the Needless Things Podcast, where we talk about toys, movies, music, and all manner of pop culture dorkery. I am your host, Dave, and I'm very excited to be bringing to you, uh, by popular demand and going along with the concept of striking while the iron is hot, the Nicholas Cage match panel from Dragon Con. Uh, it got lots of talk. It's one of the best received panels I've ever been a part of, and people absolutely loved it. And I'm not going to tell you right now who the best Nicolas Cage was. And, and if you're not familiar with the concept, what it is is we have a King of the Rings style tournament live in the Dragon Con American Sci Fi Classics track room. Heavy audience participation. We selected 16 of Nicolas Cage's roles. And had them go to war to determine who the best Nicolas Cage was. So, <laughs> it was insane. It was crazy. Uh, myself, Ryan Cadaver, Gary Mitchell, and Joe Crow were there along with a room full of what you'll know by the end of this episode were complete lunatics. And uh, it, we just really, really had a great time doing this. And the outcome will surprise you. I'm not going to tell you right now what it was. Uh, what I will tell you is that the cover art for today's episode was provided by one of the people that was in that room. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I am very proud to have been part of a panel that inspired such creativity it's great, and again, if you were not there and you have seen the cover art, it will all make sense by the time this episode is over. Uh, I'm sure you can pick up on a little bit of it, but the uh, the process by which we got to that uh, particular B is fascinating. <laughs> or just completely bonkers. Or both. So anyway, before we get to that, and, and by the way, thanks for checking in. If you're only listening to this because of the hype surrounding Nicolas Cage match, uh, I appreciate you stopping by, and, and I hope we can entice you into checking out our archives of 281 previous episodes chock full of dorkery goodness, and uh, sticking around for the future by subscribing on iTunes, Podbean, uh, and, and all of the places where podcasts go to live, because uh, I think we're in all of them. And if we're not, let me know. Join the Needless Things Podcast Facebook uh, group and say, Hey, Dave, here's a place where your podcast isn't, and I will put it there, lickety-split. Uh, all right, so before we get to that incredible live panel from Dragon Con 2019, there are a couple things I want to talk about. First of all is the new Calibri's album, Flee the Light. It is different from anything they've done before. I'm still taking it in. I've only listened to it twice now, uh, once on the turntable, once in the car, and I'm still absorbing it. Uh, you know, sometimes an artist puts out a new album uh, and it immediately just strikes you. Uh, Lust for Sacrilege, their last album, uh, which, by the way, still don't approve of that title, fellas, uh, but the album itself is absolutely fantastic and blew me away right out of the gate. Loved it. Uh, this one didn't blow me away right out of the gate, but it's different, and I'm processing it, and it's cool. And most of my favorite albums of all time, I did not love at first. So, you know, it, it just... Sometimes something's immediately awesome. Sometimes something takes time to, to sink in and appreciate. So I'm I'm still, like I said, I'm still absorbing it now and uh, within a, you know, a few more listens. And, and that's the thing, is I want to keep listening to it. So it's not... Uh, it, it's it's good. It's very good. It's it's uh, some of the most interesting work Calabrese has done, and I think that's part of it is reconciling this sound with you know going to way back in the day, and I think 2009 was when I discovered them, maybe, and uh, you know very different sound now from then. But it's a decade. You know, guy, most bands don't want to do the exact same thing for a decade. Uh, you know, unless they're ACDC, and believe me, there is nothing wrong with ACDC, but, you know, most bands sound quite a bit different over a 10-year time span, 
And that's, you know, sometimes it's a great thing, sometimes it's not. But with Calabrese, I think it is a good thing. And, and it's always compelling to see what they're going to do next. So check out Flee the Light. You can get it from them. You can get it, uh, I'm sure it's available uh, where all fine music is, is sold. Online. Online. It's not like you're going to walk into Best Buy and buy it. But, I mean, heck, you can barely walk into Best Buy and buy anything these days. Uh, another thing that I wanted to discuss is I, I don't no I, I I'm allowed to say this I'm allowed to say this I've heard two of the songs from the Casket Creatures forthcoming EP I can't remember if they've said the name publicly so I'm not going to say what it is uh, but I've heard two songs I will not say what their titles are I, I did not sign a non disclosure agreement. But I also don't want to let the cat out of the bag or let the cows fly out of the barn or whatever. Uh, but I'll just say, holy shit. Holy shit, you guys. Holy shit. If you thought Return to Wolfton was great, you have no idea what is in store when this thing hits. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, and I, I haven't even said this to like Ryan or anybody I'm actually a little sad that it's only an EP. And look, it's cool because it's going to be, if it's if this is it, if the two songs I've heard are an indication, I don't know if I could handle any more than an EP, but also like, huh, I want a whole album of this fucking incredible stuff. But uh, it's I'm sure it will all be done soon. I mean, I, I can't, it's not like there's any sort of significant time period coming up that the Casket Creatures might have a special connection to or want to sort of sync up with for any kind of musical release. Nothing that I can think of. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when it'll be. Uh, maybe that Christmas Creatures project that I suggested years ago will, will come to fruition as well. But anyway, uh, new Casket Creatures coming soon. Uh, keep your eyes on their Facebook and everywhere else. You, you know how Google works. I'm very excited to see how the world reacts to what I've heard. Uh, and finally, the last thing I'm going to discuss in this intro today is is not happy. It's not stoked musical news. It's not exciting different stuff from a, an artist I love. It is uh, a very disappointing follow-up to something that I adored and really thought was going to be part of uh, a masterful set of movies. And that is today, uh, I went and finally was, had the time to go and see It Chapter 2 in the theater, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I think I'm going to sit down with uh, Ryan Cadaver and maybe Nicole Gould. I don't know. I, I'm going to... I'm going to sit down at some point and we're going to discuss this thing because I, I need that. I need to get it out of me. But I'll just say this for now. I was concerned about the emotional connections that we built in the first movie and how they would carry over. Uh, well, you heard a little bit of it last week. Uh, if you go back to last week's episode of the Needless Things podcast, we had the panel uh, about the, the last movie, the 1990 movie, basically about everything it except for the new movie, which was not out at the time we recorded that panel. Um, so you can go back and listen to that, and you can hear sort of what my concerns and expectations were, and I feel like this movie just blew it. Uh, some of the casting was a problem. Uh, for for me, The I, I, it's so weird to me, as much as I'm a fan of humor, it's so weird to me to be to have said so often over the last few years uh, that humor in movies is a problem, but there was some humor that was, I felt, badly misplaced. Uh, the movie jumped all over the place. It, it had a problem with its own internal timeline and logic. I do think it's possible once the movies are combined, which I believe director Andy Muschietti, 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 I don't know. Uh, I believe he has stated that there will be a final supercut of both movies uh, and hopefully they will intertwine and I think that'll help with the emotional connections. Uh, but there are other things that I just don't, uh, it, it's, it's never going to be what I was hoping it would be because there's, there's too much that I took issue with 
for me to ever fully embrace it the way that I, I thought and the way that I was hoping I would. Uh, and that's a shame, but, you know, that's how things happen sometimes. So hopefully I'll be able to sit down and uh, have a conversation soon to do an actual review of it, Chapter 2. Uh, but for now, I'm I'm not happy. I didn't like it. And uh, I think that's a damn shame. Oh, you know what? I do have one more item, and I won't go on long about it. But I will say this. I'm a huge fan of Jim Jarmusch. And I watched, uh, me and Mrs. Troublemaker last night watched The Dead Don't Die. And that is one of my new favorite movies. I adored it from beginning to end. I think it was absolutely fantastic. I totally understand people who didn't like it. But I thought it was wonderful. I pre-ordered the the score on vinyl. I'm super excited to get that and to sit down and and enjoy that. Uh, I ordered the movie on Blu-ray, even though I know there's going to be a Criterion at some point because I believe there's a criterion of most of Jarmusch's movies at this point but I gotta have it I want to be able to sit down and watch that thing anytime I want to watch it because it was just it's it's uh it's all about character and situation it's not so much about the narrative as it is about being in the moment of these characters and this weirdness and Jim Jarmusch's vision of that apocalyptic zombie movie and and I just loved it you guys I thought it was awesome so go uh, especially if you're a fan of his work already uh go go check this out it just you, you gotta it's the cast is tremendous it, the humor I was just I was crying there twice twice during the movie I was crying from laughing so hard and I get I, there's a sense that if that had been in a theater people would have been staring at me because I don't know that it's all for everybody but if you're kind of a weirdo like me then I think you'll really dig The Dead Don't Die. So go check it out. Uh, But now, check out some Mystery Men, who you can find at mysterymenofsurf.com, or just Google the Mystery Men Surf, and you'll find everything that they're up to. They actually have a show coming up next weekend. Um, The I believe it's called the Atlanta Surf Stomp Festival. I'm at work, so I will not be able to go, but you can go. There are a lot of great bands playing and uh, the Mystery Men will be there. You can see them live, which, honestly, as much as I love their stuff, and, and it, it is perfect car music uh, and perfect interstitial music for a podcast, uh, honestly, I believe surf rock needs to be experienced live. And the Mystery Men are a great live show, and, and especially in the environment of a festival-type situation. Uh, so if you can get out uh, to check that out, check it out uh go you know go on facebook find the event the surf surf stomp festival 2019 something along those lines like i said you know how the google works you can figure it out uh so now uh, to whet your appetite until next weekend's festival here's a taste of the mystery men Talk about stupid 
through the sci-fi areas of work is we've come to these kind of conclusions. So we did like, well, we can't, uh, we can't just leave the hour empty. So what we were going to do is like, hey, Cage, my big Academy Award winning actor, <laughs> Cage, has certainly done enough roles to do what we do here in the Sci Fighters. Sci Fighters is King of the Ring, correct, sir? That is correct. It is a King of the Ring style tournament where we will determine who is the Nicholas Cage. The cagiest of cages. Oh. <laughs> See, this is why you've been ringing us. By the way, let us introduce to our right first is our color commentator, ring announcer, man about town, master of the microphone, Mr. I thought you were going to keep going. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to address to me. So, we, I, I can't help but notice that this room is absolutely packed to the rafters, as they say. Uh, so Nicholas Cage still a box office draw, am I right? Yeah. 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 And I don't think we're going to have any problem whatsoever coming up with 16 Nicholas Cage characters to fight to the death to determine which one is the most Nicholas Cageiest. And sitting to his right is our referee, our man who will arbitrate, call right down the middle, shoot straight, ask questions never, Mr. Ryan Cadaver. Hey. Uh, I'm super excited about this. Nicholas Cage is the greatest actor of all time. I think everyone knows that, so uh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> and if you're a fan of punk rock and horror, you should absolutely check out his band, The Casket Creatures. Look for them on Facebook and all sorts of social media. They are a kick-ass Georgia band. We are currently working on a song about Nicholas Cage, so we'll get yes. that. So, as the, the master of the microphone, why don't you explain what a King of the Ring match is to anybody who doesn't know? For anybody that's not familiar with a King of the Ring style tournament, there are 16 competitors. We will start off with matchups on either side, and we've got to fill the brackets. Where are our brackets? Do we, we have, have brackets? Our bracket. Do we, ha do, we have, do we have do we have brackets? We made the bracket now. You made, this is coming for four months. We made the bracket now. Well, I, I can't help but notice you also made the bracket tiny. Do we have an audience version of that bracket? No. 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 So what okay, here's what we're gonna do. Everybody just clump up right here. Just all come up front and stand around this podium. No, we're going we're gonna to fill that bracket out, and we're going to do it taking your suggestions for Nicolas Cage roles to compete. And uh, eventually we will round out these battles with your help determining which character would defeat the other, and uh, we'll have a winner. Yes. And this will determine... The, as you said, the cage is Nick Cage, and that will settle all the major arguments we all have. All the arguments. All the, all, it's going to settle all the arguments that you guys have had, that we got, that, that me and you have had, except for one big argument. Um, clearly, I think we all can agree that Vehicle Voltron is way better than Lion Voltron. Whoa! Whoa. I cannot. I can not make that agreement. You are full of crap. There is no way Diego Ultron is superior. Fight. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just, you're full of crap. I got a dollar. I am not full of crap. Why don't you go over there and hang out with your best friend if you think I'm, I'm so full of crap? I think I will. Right. Bye, Gary. <laughs> Voltron is the most Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, everybody. I hope everybody can follow this, because I can't. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Well, if they're using it for someone else, I'm sure off in like a heartbeat. Check with, check with Gary and see if he wants okay. to. Now let's get down to our serious... Very business. serious business from here on out, guys. Oh. I'm not sure that word means what you think it means. <laughs> 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 
like, let's stage serious. I have to get away from you and your buffoonery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I will keep the bracket. We'll get started. Why don't we? And for... Jennifer, you're our roaming mic, right? Yes, I am. I'm also a professional graphic designer that they could have used to make the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> Another damn it, Joe. <laughs> Man. Hey, Joe, hand me the room. Hey, 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 okay. I'm going to take this one. Never mind. No, we need to confer that. Oh, we're my right now. You can be the room. Okay, well, I can. So, planning Dave, is everything. We got yes. the good parts. We got the good parts. Dave, you're a professional. Start. <laughs> All right, what we need is to pick out 16 Nicolas Cage characters to compete. Uh, so, we need anyone who would like to suggest a character. You know how this works. You guys are on point. Yes, sir. This is great. Um, Pastor Troy from First Top. Uh, Face Off. Yeah. All right, now, I was waiting for this one to be suggested. Are we talking Nicolas Cage, Castro <laughs> Troy? Oh, <laughs> right? Are we talking Nicolas Cage when he's portrayed by the cop? <laughs> Sean Archer. So which one? You know, so you made the suggestion. Are we hot no. Nicholas Cage or crazy? I think it has to be. Crazy. Crazy. Well, I think it has to be the character that Nicholas Cage is technically playing. Um, why not? So he starts off as. Well, right, right, right. But like in the beginning. Let's just say it's I don't know. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, referee. I'm the referee, and my vote is crazy Nicolas Cage always wins over any other Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so, so, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank goodness. A, someone, a voice of sanity. Thank you. <laughs> now, there's a reason that Joe and Gary are on opposite sides of the table here. We can't let these two get too close to each other because you see what happens. Joe, there must be a Nicolas Cage that you have strong feelings about that is diametrically opposed to a Nicolas Cage that Gary has strong feelings about. I want to get Nicolas Cage from Raising Arizona in there. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's put him down. Her womb was a stony ground. <laughs> all right, now, Gary, you have to have a choice that you know Joe would just completely disagree with. Spider-Man Noir. <laughs> what? He's outraged. Look at him. Oh, my God. So is that the end? No. No, 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 no. Not at all. We no, just, no, no, no. It's I addition. wanted to be sure we got their picks in because of this gimmick that is so working well. <laughs> <laughs> Next one in the audience. Ghost Rider Cage. Yeah. yeah. Name of the character, anybody. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. I will accept any of those answers. All right. Sailor from Wild at Heart. Woo! No? I don't know. Okay. Just, just a... <laughs> Cameron Poe. On air. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I heard at least three people in the line out there going, Connor has to be in there. <laughs> Ronnie Camerari from Moonstuck. Yeah. Oh. Not only is that I a don't deep think cut, it's a far. normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for Nicholas Cage. Charlie Kaufman from Adaptation. Yes. Charlie Kaufman. Ah. Okay, so we do have some normal people in there. I want her my role. Right. Red from Mandy. Do we have any other? Okay. All my English. What was that one? <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Oh, sorry, I was talking. Say again? Um, Benjamin Gates from National Treasure 2, because you know they improved it after the first second. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> National Treasure 2. Peter from Vampire's Kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Woo. 
Alright, all my Nicholas cosplayers, stand up. Save, uh, save one spot. Not the beat. Uh, I've got a deep cut. Everybody give him a round of applause. Uh, I'm working on the speed hairline. Uh, oh gosh. Balthazar from Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. Yeah. God, that was a movie. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we, yeah, that's the thing. It's like there have been Wizard so many Wizard roles. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. We've got one, two, uh, three. Counting is hard. Three. Yeah, yeah, even counting is hard. What? We, we, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We've only got just a handful of spots left. Um, How many? There? That's a lot left. All right, I'm going to suggest a deep cut. Lieutenant Terrence McDonough from Bad Lieutenant Port of Call, New Orleans. Thank you. Uh, we need at least two more. At least two more. What you got? Speckles from G-Force. That's on my list. I love that you picked that. That's fantastic. Let's see. All right, we have one, two. I'm Milton, drive angry. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think you know he's what? already dead. Let's see. How many squeeze? If only that bracket was larger. <laughs> and, and that pen was smaller. Why did you choose the world's largest pen for the world's smallest bracket? <laughs> because GoPro does everything in the most practical way possible. Thank you. All right, let's see. One, two, three. That would have made sense. The whiteboard is here to keep track of Dammit Joe's. Uh, win. I think I'm winning. I think I'm winning. Yeah, I, I haven't said Damn it, Gary once yet. Is Gary no? Damn it, Joe. Okay, okay. I would like to suggest. I've fought Gary um, no quite a few times. Oh, yeah. Gary uh, from Lord of War. People think it all. I don't know if anyone likes Lord of War. I'm sorry, what was your pick, sir? Gary from Lord of War. Gary from Lord of War. Four more spaces. All right, we have four more spaces. What else? The dad. Randy from Dalgo. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh. Terrence McDonough was from the Sad Lieutenant. Correct. Wicker Man's on the dad. Yeah, some men's head here. Yeah, I gotta get Wicker Man. Brent Ryan from Mom and Dad. Man, that's good. That's good. Wicker Man, let me put that guy. Alright, so. Big Daddy from Kick Ass. Woo! Yeah! Let me see. All right, how many we got left, Joe? Boom, 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 boom. boom we have boom, 19. John Kostler from the North. Yeah, just about everybody on my list. Yeah. No, they are not thinking about it. Different movie. He's not in there. Spoon put in his mouth. All right, Joe, what do we got? We have Dan 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 Okay, not. I don't know. Do we? <laughs> what are we missing? Little okay. Junior Brown from Kiss of Death. Oh my gosh, Kiss of Death? <laughs> really? <laughs> Whoa! You are on your own, sir. No, that's a great one. Wow. Do we have the rock up there yet? Stanley Goodspeed. Yeah, the rock. Oh, Stanley Goodspeed. Yeah, we don't have the rock. Yeah. What's that movie he's in where he steals all the cars? Gone in 60, 60 seconds. seconds. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank, Thank you. 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 We got Spot, 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 Moore, Rare, Rare, from Ghost Rider, Driving, and Connie, and Big Daddy. There's too many good answers. Moonstruck, Superman. Especially since he lost all this money. All right, we are going over the bracket. We are going over the bracket. We're going to play the song. Are we good? I remembered all that completely. I think I got one more. I had a couple of those left out, but I can't remember which one. Is the bracket? That is the question. We can do one more. We can do one more. How about audience more. just yelling people out and you get the rock? The rock. <laughs> Everyone just did we get the rock? We yeah. got the rock, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, one right. right. more. Just yell it out. Yell it out. City of Angels. That's what I'm talking about. City of Angels. City of Angels. City of Angels. City of Angels. He's an angel. He's the guy from Not the Beat. He's the 
Not the Bees has to be in. Yeah, oh, it's in there. The <laughs> guy from Not the Bees. <laughs> That's my favorite movie, Not the Bees. I like Not the Bees 2 more. <laughs> <laughs> That's any old Bees All right. Uh, we have a bracket, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! All right. Are we starting on the top right? We'll start on All the right, top well, right. Well, we right. should actually probably start with if you, as our announcer, would like to read the brackets. Well, that, oh, okay. All right. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I can read the brackets. All right. <laughs> Match number one, Spider-Man Noir versus Red from Mandy. Match number two, The Rock versus City of Angels. <laughs> Match number three, Ghost Rider versus Drive Angry. <laughs> Con Air versus uh, Big Daddy from Kick Ass 2. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Sandler. I know, I thought yeah, that was Sandler. Yeah, that's Sandler. I think it too. Uh, crazy Nicholas Cage from Face Off versus Sailor from Wild at Heart. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> National Treasure 2. National oh. Treasure 2 versus Adaptation. Adaptation. <laughs> Vampire's Kiss. Oiled up. Vampire's Kiss versus uh, Terrence from Port of Call, New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, Wicker Man versus Moonstruck. <laughs> All, All right, right, here we go. And we have to remember that these are battles to the death. Because I Nicolas Cage. Cage wouldn't do it any other way. No, and I mean, don't worry, though. He'll come back. It's oh, yeah. what he does. That's all he does. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> all right, so we want to start with Spider-Man Noir. Well, he called that match number one. Match number one, well, Spider-Man right. Noir. Spider-Man Noir against Red from, from Mandy. Mandy. So, who thinks in that battle Spider-Man Noir would win? Nobody can beat Spider-Man. <laughs> Yeah, both. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, who thinks that Red from Mandy would destroy Spider-Man? No. So, how would Red? I would be, or how would be? Yeah, how would how would uh, how would Spider-Man how would more this happen? Because Red would do a bunch of demon cocaine and tear his head off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's. <laughs> I, I do have to point out that this gentleman has cosplayed this character. Yeah, I so we that. need your input. Uh, I mean, no, that's it. Like, he would have an awesome axe that he makes, and he would go chase down Spider-Man Noir and chop his head off. And look, Spider-Man Noir would be very mopey and sad about it, yeah. but that's what would happen. Yeah. Sure. It would suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a Spider-Man fanboy, so I'm gonna have to vote Spider-Man, but I have been outvoted and I recognize that. I don't have you. I don't know. We're gonna will three. We'll You're the referee. Well, well that's why I was I was like, we'll do put you put what's your input? I I I I I gotta go with red. He crazy. <laughs> that's true. The crazier Nicolas Cage wins. That's my role. The crazy Nicolas Cage wins. Yeah, that Mandy Red. Red. Spider-Man beaten in the first round. And I've gone from the giant pen to the crayon, which is very appropriate for you know, the sci-fi, sci-fi classics track. This is like a thing we would have all done when we were twelve. Sure. Sure. And I approve. Only with less mentions of demon cocaine. Yes. <laughs> so to you, had unless we had HBO when we were 12, which we all did. All right. Next match. Nicolas Cage from The Rock versus Nicolas Cage as an actual angel from City of Angels. <laughs> Literal angel Nicolas Cage. An angel from heaven, guys. A real departure for Nicolas Cage. The Rock. And the Rock. I don't... Sam Goodspeed's a very talented chemist. See? The ex Two really need to Right, this. but the other guy's an angel. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the movie, he gave up being an angel... To be with a woman. Uh, spoiler alert. Who then? Sorry, sorry. Spoiler alerts, guys. 
<laughs> you ruined it. I really haven't seen the movie. We ruined City of Angels. No, they, 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 they saved you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good. It's, it's cool. Don't worry about it. So are we talking still an angel, Nicolas Cage, or I gave up my wings and let a woman die? Oh, We're talking still about... An still an angel. If it comes to you, it would be four minutes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's in the movie. Yeah, for sure. the end of Absolutely. The, end of the prison well. with the flares up. But so, he's an actual angel. What are we saying? Yeah, we. This one we throw into the crowd. Or? Yeah, we have to. I have yeah, no yeah, idea. Have this yeah, is stupid. <laughs> That's what we do here on the So Sam gets paid versus Sarah eight. McLaughlin. <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin does a run in and sings a song about pets and depresses both characters so much that they jump off a cliff. I think Sarah McLaughlin has entered into the cage match. Sarah McLaughlin. Referee. <laughs> Money's better than the movie at all. It turns out the cage's cage is Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah, it, it could happen. We're going to have to get this kind of way. At the end of the panel, we're all going to sing Sarah McLaughlin songs. No, we're not. No, 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 we're not. We're going to be sad about our pets. And then we all drank the Kool-Aid. All right, let's go over to the, 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 uh, the leaving Las Vegas bracket on the left. Okay, we will... Uh, so many things to discuss. One punch to the liver and that guy would be out. <laughs> he, he didn't make the semis. He's like the the first liver. Liver. Yeah. Yeah. Considering right, he's been the one punching his liver the whole time. <laughs> and then Elizabeth Shue comes in for the recharge. <laughs> All right. Nicholas Cage from Face Off. Ooh. Against Nick Cage from Wild at Heart. Oh, okay, see, they're both off. great. I gotta they're go with Sailor. Crazy. Uh, that's just me. I gotta go with Sailor. Because I love the silence. He's, Everyone's really his his crazy <laughs> to me <laughs> is. Uh, I mean, it's David Lynch crazy, that's and to true. me, David, David Lynch, Lynch crazy, crazy trumps a lot of other crazy. Yeah. How many, how many dubs are there? Yeah. How many dubs are there? <laughs> that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely sure really like that. <laughs> I love dubs and guns. <laughs> okay. Nick Cage trying to play Travolta. <laughs> Nick Cage trying to play Travolta, though. That was wild. But so, yeah, if we're going with crazy. You see, here's the thing, though. Crazy Nick Cage should face off. We got the face <laughs> as he grabs yeah. the lady from behind. Yeah, that one. That's, that's <laughs> pretty intense. That's pretty much all. So, are you trying to say he's going to grab Sailor from behind? Yes. Yeah. That's his go to? Yes. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. I can't argue you, that. You know, here's the thing. Nicholas Cage, one of the things we love about him is his facial expressions. Oh, sure. I mean, look at the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's that accurate. is... That's, like, that's actually that, a photograph. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say that wah face when he grabs that lady from behind in a play, in an uh, inappropriate area, shall we say. It is pretty peak cage face. <laughs> Dressed as Greece. Dressed so, as Greece. So we're saying wild. Well, we have to throw it to the audience. Yeah, we throw, yeah, it, to we throw it to the audience. You see, right. we make the arguments and they decide. That's and right. And then he decides what they cage decide. Cage from face off. H hands and noise. <laughs> Cage from Wild at Heart. Man. Wow. That was a big fat man. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think uh, Face Off Cage our, wins it. Our referee says Face Off. Dogs <laughs> win. This must be fixed. <laughs> over, over the body of Nick from Wild at Heart, he gives him the face waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> so it said, you see, and also we had to let him win because if, if uh, Face Off had lost, then we would have had Doves crying. And nobody wants that. Because right. we all know what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, all right, now, uh, our next round is... Nicholas Cage from Adaptation, so Charlie Kaufman, and Nicholas Cage from National Treasure 2. You know, wins. Well, here's the question. Is the fight that Nicholas Cage from Adaptation is writing the script for, for National Treasure 3? Uh, right? Nicholas Cage, you know, in, in Adaptation, it's very meta, so we have to meta the meta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So is Nicolas Cage an adaptation writing the Nicolas Cage cage match tournament? Oh my gosh. So you're saying he can make his oh own God. rules? He could make his own rules. Whoa. You're blowing my mind, man. <laughs> but what would he do with that power? Nothing effective. Has he learned it? Right. He would steal right. the, stat, uh, the, the, what, the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Or no, he would steal the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Killing, he couldn't even kill Sean Bean. And, oh. Oh. <laughs> that may be the biggest burn I've heard in a while. You're so lame you couldn't kill Sean B. Literally anything can kill Sean A nap killed Sean Bean once. <laughs> The easiest guy to kill. So, shall we put it to the audience? Yes. Yeah. All right, National Treasure 2. Woo! <laughs> National Treasure 2! National Treasure 2! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up, Nicolas Cage from Vampire's Kiss versus Nicolas Cage from Bad Lieutenant 2, New Orleans. I mean, you know which way I'm going on yeah, that one. Yeah. And I would like to point out that Bad Lieutenant 2 was directed by the incredible Werner Herzog and there is literally no crazier Nicolas Cage than a Nicolas Cage being directed by that man. There's That's so much the point I'm standing fight. on. Yeah. yeah. There are going to be a lot of drugs in this fight. I would definitely say Bad Lieutenant too if I had to pick. But, you know. He ate cockroaches. <laughs> well, the, yeah, gay kid, I, that vampire, I mean. I mean, that's where the picture comes from, is vampire. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Kind of, but, but. EFJ! <laughs> but again, a Crazy Cage, I, I gotta agree with the panel that Crazy Cage is best cage. True, 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 true. Throw it to the crowd? Throw it to the crowd. Vampire's Kiss. <laughs> Bad Lieutenant 2, New Orleans. <laughs> This is, this is why your job is hard. Uh, honestly, I, I really do think Vampire's Kiss is a tad louder. So if I'm going to judge off the crowd, Vampire's Kiss. Vampire's right. Kiss is your winner! <laughs> now I want to save... I'm going to go, let's go, go ahead and finish off this bracket. Let's go ahead and finish off this bracket. Nicolas Cage from Moonstruck versus Nicolas Cage from Wicker Man. <laughs> <laughs> It is, He's uh, so dumb in both of those. <laughs> <laughs> is the guy for, okay? Is, is the Nicholas Cage from Moonstruck allowed to use bees? Okay, and, and does Cher come in to save him? Does Cher come in to save him? I mean, we've already had one run in. So we already had one run in. So yeah, there's Cher has been barred from the building. Thank God. So, I mean. Uh, again, uh, oh yeah, he does only have one hand in Moonstruck. Mm. Only one hand. Okay, now see, there you go. Because yeah, but you can hold a lot of bees in one hand. <laughs> if, if he wins, then does that mean he won the fight single-handed? He did win the fight single-handed. If he wins, he had the big knife. I expected more of a groan on that. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> um, and isn't he a cook? Do you need yeah. Does anybody remember those movies? Does Oscar winning Nicolas Cage trump non Oscar winning Nicolas Cage? Very <laughs> not. Like, really super not Oscar. <laughs> Possibly Razzie winning. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I think it was. All right, so that I think this is the question we're Oscar faced with now. Razzie? Razzie? Woo! Oscar. We have so many fans 
the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. <laughs> they would be really thrilled to know that, I think. So, I Moonstruck it is. What? What? Please have a good point that doesn't let Moonstruck win. <laughs> you don't win the Academy Award for Moonstruck. That's the bees. He the digital fence. He wants to leave me on the face. I thought it was Moonstruck. He's a bear suit punching oh. someone. Oh, that's just a bear suit. All right. He's just a bear punching a woman. Yeah. 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 How did he get the bear win? Right? All right, Chris. Yeah. All right. We're jumping over to our other bracket. Let's do. I'm going to save that one for you. Oh, Joe. Who won? Shark won. No, Wicker Man won. Yeah! Yeah! I'm sorry, did I do a run in on the referee? Yes, you did. So Moonstruck won. Moonstruck won then? No! The referee was distracted. The referee was distracted by the crowd. So I guess Wicker Man gets it, yeah? This is why you are a WWE referee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Nicolas Cage from Con Air against Nicolas Cage, Big Daddy from Kick Ass. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Some of these fights are going to hurt. Well, I think in this one, age has to enter into it because in Kick Ass, Big Daddy's older, he's broken down, he's hurting. Like, he's sort of towards the end of his time. Con whereas Con Air Nicholas Cage is sprightly, young, tough guy, ready to Put kick some butt. He like, he's he's right right upside down. Down. Yeah. the hair. That hair. That hair. What hair? What hair? Wait, Con, hey, Con Air, when he steps out and he gets that <laughs> register yeah. lethal weapon. Again, you have to come down to the cage face. There's no gif of Big Daddy's hair. No. <laughs> And again, we gotta come down to the cage face. No, that look that. when he gets the win. <laughs> How many times is there a bunny in a basket? <laughs> yes. Put the bunny in the basket. Red dick. But he he let a pedophile go free at the end of the fire, though, did he not? He did! He did not only that, an ugly pedophile. <laughs> We assume he was a pedophile. We didn't see him do it. <laughs> what? Do we have to see him do it? No. <laughs> I don't think they can show that. <laughs> I don't think they can. What was your comment? Uh, something about bunny. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go with Big Daddy oh, yeah, now. Yeah. I was all he con here, but. He also looks like a racist uncle weapons. in con here. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we should. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crowd, crowd. Alright, Big Daddy. Woo! Someone was so mad was when uh, I believe Ripley from Alien beat the junkyard dog in one of our sci fi oh, yeah. that, that one's stolen from him, though. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and besides, everybody need a bone to chew on. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, our final match in, the fi in, in this bracket. Uh, Only six hours left. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Cage from Drive Angry against the Ghost Rider. Johnny Blaze. They're both coming straight out of hell. They're they're almost literally the same character. Yeah. <laughs> it's, one has a skull face. Right. One it's, one and the other one has fire on the yeah. Really yeah. close. <laughs> one's on fire and one's not on fire. Yeah. Well, okay, here's here's my two cents on this one. Milton from Drive Angry has a very specific purpose in that movie. Whereas Johnny Blaze is much broader, like he's is, he's the spirit of vengeance. Yeah. Like his his mission plan is is a little broader. I feel like Milton's motivation, his heart's just not in this fight. Drive Angry's full title is Drive Angry Shot in 3D. So he's coming at 
Ghost Rider from a dimension that he doesn't even know. <laughs> Or at least the second one was. It was, was Drive Angry 3D. Yeah. Yeah, it's it wasn't. The it still wasn't in the title. It wasn't Ghost Rider in 3D. Yeah, right. Okay, right. Okay. It was in the title. Yeah. Drive Angry. Yeah. This is. Okay, remind me. Did you see the actual devil in Drive Angry? <sighs> No. No. Okay. Well, he made a deal with the actual devil. Yeah, because you know we have Peter Fonda as the devil. You got William Fickner. Yeah, William Fickner is, but. How is he's not? Ooh, okay. <laughs> Fickner's unstoppable in Drive Angry. So does he enter into this fight in any way? Because he's he's got to deal with Milton, right? Yeah. So is he coming in to help Ghost Rider, or is he attacking both of them since they're both kind of hell escaping Escapees. type deals? Yeah. Could we eventually get Fickner versus McLaughlin? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm yeah, hoping. You can't kill Ghost Rider; he's already dead. Well, no, here's they're both. Well, they're both already, already dead. Here, yeah. Do Fickner and Fonda team up, and it's devil on devil action. <laughs> to bring them both wait, wait, where are we talking about now? This would be a really good time for the City of Angels dude to show up. <laughs> <laughs> and he would just kill them both. Sarah McLaughlin already killed him. Go back to your rule about Cage faces. Do you think about Nick Cage changing into the Ghost Rider? He's got the most ridiculous face. <laughs> You're right. Now, granted, the, I, I, it's behind the scenes, but if you've seen the video of him with the skull face paint, from the filming of the movie, that right there it gives it the edge because that is ultimate crazy cage. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so, should we throw it to the crowd? Yeah. We have to. We have to. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, drive angry. Woo! Oh, yeah, it's going down. Or Ghost Rider. Whoa! Time. Ghost <laughs> wow, that was so close. <laughs> I think the voting all right, all right, all right. Here. Now let's go over to our other bracket, and we will do Nick Cage from Face Off against Nick well, okay, Cage are from. We in the, have we had the part two? We are now. We now have one, two. Uh, one, two are the, three, is four, the, the preliminary round all done? Preliminary rounds all done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So in that case, you should probably read, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so here we go. Sure. I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. Yeah. We have uh, Crazy Nicolas Cage from Face Off versus Nicolas Cage from National Treasure 2. <laughs> <laughs> we have Vampires Kiss Nicolas Cage versus... Uh, That's not versus, uh, Wicker Man Nicolas Cage. Oh, no. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. yeah. Vampires um, Kiss versus Wicker Man. We have Go Johnny Blaze versus Con Air Nicholas Cage. Oh. And finally, Red from Mandy versus Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> going to be equal parts delighted and disgusted if Sarah McLaughlin wins this. Let's do this! Kind of defeats the whole purpose of all this. Really. Which would make it more of a Any wagers upon the Nick Cage match? If anybody was betting on it, they're going to lose. I don't yeah. know, unless they bet on Sarah McLaughlin. When, 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 when anybody, anybody not here finds out who wins, they'll be like, damn it! I knew it! Sarah McLaughlin rules. <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin. Who, whoever had that someone would mention Sarah McLaughlin on a panel at Dragon Con, you're the big winner. Just made a fortune. There's yeah. now going to be an inside the joke like, who's the best Nicholas Cage? Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, 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 face off against National Treasure 2. Oh, man. All right. All right. All right. Face okay, off. Okay, okay. Face off. Face off. Face off. All right. So, I mean, a face off on that one. I, National Treasure yeah, didn't so it, it do a whole heck of a lot for me. Yeah. And I hate to judge the character because of the movie, but. It belongs in a museum. He stole an airplane. I don't think that's the right movie. Yeah, sure it is. Here's some more than Nicholas Cage. But what face off is the old. The other cage's face oh, or not? Face How would that work? Yeah, it's hard to face. John face stealing does look the same, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I like this 
idea that Nicolas Cage steals his own face. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I'm not the, the, the Kate, I'm this Cage, not that Cage. Nicolas Cage would do that, guys. <laughs> so it's the so, kind of so cagey cage maneuver we expect from him. Uh, <laughs> you people are letting me down. Yeah, Gary, no. <laughs> um, so I think we've pretty much determined that face-off Nicolas Cage wins, but move for- moves forward as National yeah. Treasure. <laughs> that is definitely in a round of agreement. All right, seriously, as stupid as this has been, that was genius. <laughs> All right, so what do you want? <laughs> Nicholas Cage disguised as National Treasure. Nicholas Cage from Vampire's Kiss against <laughs> Nicholas Cage from Wicker Man. I mean, it's just, he's a vampire. He's, I Personally, I think Vampire's Kiss wins that one. He's a vampire. I gotta go with that. Is he allergic to bees? <laughs> Have the bees been, like, around garlic? Like, are these, no, are these, just, no. are these Transylvanian garlic bees? You don't know that. Yeah, do they stick with holy water? Oh, no, yeah. 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 She would eat bees. No, no, they're making holy honey. Oh. <laughs> they're Vatican bees. <laughs> Killer so, Vatican bees. Clearly, there's a bear punching his women. Clearly, the vampires kiss vampires stung to death by Vatican bees. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I like that. We gotta throw it to the crowd. Yeah, we gotta go with we'll the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, How many bees are there? There are a lot of them. Who, I don't even remember who the other one was. Vampires kiss. <laughs> Do, do the Vatican bees move on to the next round? Yeah. I never want to say that. Cyrus the virus? A lot of products. A lot of products. Oh, oh. Ghost Rider is distracted by the pedophile that Con Air let run away. He goes off after him. Ghost Rider's out. So Ghost Rider leaves the fight. Ghost Rider's out. Yeah, he's counted out. He's yeah. disqualified. He dry, yeah, he drives out. Yeah. He, so the he red one's disqualified. Like one, two, <laughs> we're counting out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have a winner. Go straight out. You did this. <laughs> okay, now Cameron Poe. Now, now here we go with uh, <laughs> uh, our final round in, in, in the semifinal bracket. Red from Mandy against Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> really hard to argue. 
argue with that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we're done with that one. Like we're it's done. Over, man. You should have cosplayed as Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever, great. Okay, if anybody cosplays Sarah McLaughlin as man as, as Red for Mandy, <laughs> find us. We need your picture. I'm not sure what that would look like. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Karen, I ask you. So see. we're saying. We're, we're doing it. All right. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go with the final four. Nicholas Cage from Face Off with Nicholas Cage from National Treasure 2 Space against the Vatican Bees. All right, guys, I'm going to have to make a call here. This has turned into a fatal four-way match. So, no hold bar, no disqualification. No disqualification so, unless right. you're running after pedophiles. Nicholas Cage with his, well, with National Treasure 2, Nicholas Cage's face. Vatican B's. Nick Ficon Air and Sarah McLaughlin. And I can't so the first question is, since she's such an animal rights activist, does Sarah yes, McLaughlin yes. team up Absolutely. with yes. oh. Because bees are an endangered... This is a fatal four-way. Bees are an endangered species. She will not attack those bees. She's going to get stung to death. There must be a winner. Because it's Nick Cage with the Nick Cage face, yes, there must be a winner. A winner. Damn it, Gary! Damn it! Well, well, because of the face-off thing, Cage is like, I can't have two Nick Cage's. Two Nick Cage's face-off thing. Alright, so it's Nick Cage's face-off thing. Alright, double Cage. Alright, so it's Nick Cage's face-off thing. I don't know, but at the very least, his, like, face is starting to slide off at this point. You just can't replace your face that many times. Here's the question. Can he here's summon doves to fight the bees? Here, here's the question. No, here's the question. Well, since he's wearing a face, does or he put all of them in a well I, I have a, and ask for lotion? Can he lock the bees he mistake Nicolas Cage from Face Off as Nicolas Cage from National Treasure 2 for Nicolas Cage from Wicker Man and kill him. <laughs> and here's, and here's my supposition. Sarah McLaughlin is trying to defend the bees, and Cameron Poe takes advantage and hits her from behind. Oh. Oh. She's a oh. bee. Oh. practical. Oh. With the bunny. Oh. With, the bunny. Oh. With, the bunny. Oh. With the bunny. With the bunny. Oh. Wait, Sarah McLaughlin is an atheist, so the bees would not be on her side. Oh! oh. Hey, yeah. Oh, the bunny. No, no. He just made an excellent point. Okay. Sarah McLaughlin is an unknown devout atheist. The Vatican bees cannot team up with her. Oh. 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 This uh, this nice lady made another excellent point. Uh, if uh, if uh, Nick Nicholas Ketchum Conair can bring the bunny, then Sarah McLaughlin must be allowed to bring the sick dog. <laughs> Clearly, you've never seen B movie. <laughs> really, big fans of B movie in here? You I never really understood what the buzz was about. <laughs> he never understood what Ryan, the buzz no. was about. Oh, no, no, wait. Bad Ryan, bad we Ryan. We have another excellent point over there. Bees die after they sting, so, so after they kill... Yeah. Well, there's a swarm. It's hard to count. They're they, suffering they, for they're some time. From the Vatican. But they are kind of... Yeah. 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 That's why they not all bees. Yeah. Yeah. I think the crowd. I think the crowd's gonna decide this one. They are. Could you please repeat that? We should fight the bees. Fight the bees. Like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they are Vatican Bees. Well, unless 
if you were to sit in this room for the next three days, that does not count. And also, they take the beer that Sarah McLaughlin wouldn't believe it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna put it to the crowd. Yeah. All right, Nicholas Cage from Face Off as Nicholas Cage from National Treasure Two. Woo! <laughs> The Vatican Bees. <laughs> Nick Cage from Con Air. Yeah. <laughs> or Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> track, you have decided that Sarah McLaughlin is the best Nicholas Cage! So, I'm really proud. You don't really pull one over on us. Okay, so... We just have to wrap this up. I think we just did, Gary. Yeah. If you enjoyed this buffoonery... No! <laughs> please rate the panel in the app. Five Nicholas Cage's if you liked it. Five Sarah McLaughlin's if you didn't. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank you guys. The late, great Ronnie James Dio had something to say about the sort of thing that you just heard. Close the city and tell the people that something's coming to call. Death and darkness are rushing forward to take a bite from the wall. Oh, you've nothing to say? They're breaking away. If you listen to fools... The mob rules. I hope we all learned a lesson about groupthink, about mob rule. I hope we all learned that when you go to the general population and take what they say, things like Sarah McLaughlin being voted the best Nicolas Cage happen. That's what happens. That's what Ronnie James Dio and Black Sabbath were talking about when they wrote the cautionary song, The Mob Rules. That's right. Next time, next time you listen to that particular Sabbath song, I want you to think about the Nicolas Cage match and what went down on that fateful day at Dragon Con 2019. And I want you to think about the next exciting episode of the Needless Things Podcast, which is our needless commentary for the classic animated feature, Heavy Metal. Speaking of Black Sabbath, our pals Evil Jim and Dan Kelly came and sat and we watched Heavy Metal and we loved it. This is a great commentary episode that I really wanted to unleash on you before Dragon Con, but there was just so much Dragon content that I couldn't make it happen. So next week, tune back in. I love you guys. Thank you for listening to the Needless Things Podcast. You're the best. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Downcast, or in the ears of a Trader Vicks employee. Love you. Mean it. Uh Uh-huh.